In larger cities like Minneapolis, Chicago, or Green Bay even, it is common for smaller surrounding communities to be swallowed up by their larger counterparts thanks to annexation and urban sprawl. However, did you know that here in Wisconsin, there is a forgotten little village hidden within another historic village that was once its own separate town and is now part of another city? If that weren't confusing enough, the city that consumed these two villages isn't very large and has a population of just under 32,000 people. Curious, I set out to uncover the story behind this strange anomaly. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. Do you remember in the episode that we did on West Bend where I had talked about briefly a town, a small town that was basically forgotten in the city of West Bend? We're now over in the part of West Bend that used to be the old village of Barton. Well, guess what? I'm back here in West Bend, gonna show you around that piece of the city known as Barton and hopefully shed a little light on what makes this part of West Bend so unique. Just to recap a little on Barton's early history, Barton got a start back in 1845 thanks to a man by the name of Barton Salisbury. An enterprising man, Barton recognized that the Milwaukee River had the potential to supply power to a mill. Apparently he was out on some sort of surveying expedition and when he arrived here and saw the potential in the land and the power of the river, he decided to locate here. He immediately put up a log shanty on the north bank, probably not too far from where I'm standing. And by the time spring rolled around in 1846, you could hear the buzz of the sawmill put up by Mr. Salisbury. Not too long after the Caldwells arrived, Edward and William, and they put up a store and a large grist mill. That was about 1847, and by then Barton was on its way to becoming its own little town. I was looking at some historical photos of Barton, and somewhere in this vicinity here, the old train depot was. And the train would have came in across here on what is now the walking trail. The photo I was looking at was shot from across the river. When we get over there, I'll show you the view and then alongside that, the picture, so you can see for yourself what it looked like back in the day. It's hard to believe, but at one time, in 1855 to be exact, Barton had a thousand residents and was larger than its neighbor, West Bend. Now Barton has been reduced to a neighborhood within the city of West Bend and could be considered a forgotten town by some. I understand there are going to be some of you who say, wow, sightseeing Sally, how can you say that Barton is forgotten when people here in West Bend call this area Barton? Well, except when you think about it, People from the outside world, people who've never been to West Bend, have probably never even heard of Barton. Not to mention, how many of the people here in West Bend actually know that Barton used to be its own separate little town? When you put it in that perspective, I think we can make the case that Barton and its history have become somewhat forgotten. Before we move on, I just want to point out a couple of historic buildings here on Commerce Street. According to the application to the National Register of Historic Places, this building here was a hardware store, but when I was looking in old photos of Barton, it was listed as more of a general store. And then next door to that would have been a tavern. And actually, back in the day, these two buildings here were attached or at least it appeared that way. I'm no expert, I'm just sharing what I know. Actually, upon further inspection, you can see on the side of the building here how it looks like at one time it was attached. They likely separated them when they did a remodel. By the way, if you're wondering whatever happened to my other half, my sidekick, Marty. Allegedly. Well, it finally happened. 
that prince turned into a frog. Okay, I know, totally lame joke. I couldn't help myself. In all reality, Marty decided to sit this one out. Wasn't exactly feeling the best, and well, when the show must go on, the show must go on. Hence, much like the little blue heron you see off in the distance all by his lonesome, I'm out here running solo today. These are supposed to be blue herons, right? I mean, they're certainly not pink flamingos. Something you'll find interesting sights here is, is that the building that now houses devices for personal protection used to be the bank. Yep, the Barton Bank, established in 1915. Although the building has had some modifications made to it, you can see it still retains some of its original features, such as the metal bars on the exterior of the windows. And then across the street you have this building. This one was of particular interest because in the paperwork submitted to the National Register of Historic Places, it says that used, this used to be Dinkle's store. Except when I was going through old photos of Barton, I noticed one that indicated there used to be a place called the Wisconsin House. It was a hotel that was owned and operated by a William Dinkle. Correction, I believe the correct pronunciation is Dunkle and not Dinkle. And if you look on the side of this building, you can see it says Wisconsin House. Now, interestingly enough, when I was reading through that paperwork submitted to the National Historic Society, it had indicated that the building had gone through some extensive remodeling about 1915. And coincidentally, I had discovered that William had turned over the business, the hotel, over to his son, Grover, in 1914. So it's quite possible that he may have gotten out of the hotel business, remodeled, and turned it into a store. But sometimes the best way to find out the real story is to ask the owner of the shop. So we're going to go on inside because it just so happens that today they're open. Well, ask and ye shall receive. We went inside and found out the scoop. Before there was a brick structure here, there was a wooden structure built in 1850. It was started out, I believe, as a general store. It burnt down and then this was built in its place. It did eventually become the Wisconsin House, the hotel, and it had a bar or tavern associated with it, or saloon, whatever you want to call it. And then in 1915, when it was extensively remodeled, apparently at that time it was sold to somebody that was an undertaker. He ran a furniture shop and of course his undertaking business in this building. If only these walls could talk, because this building, as you just heard, has had quite the history. As promised, a view from across the river. To my right is the old rolling mill. And then over in this area, I believe, is where the train depot once stood. Another fun fact about Barton is that for a time, electric washing machines were manufactured here along the river by the Barton Corporation. Interestingly enough, you can still find Barton School. However, it's been converted over to apartments. I'm now over at the corner of Barton Avenue and Salisbury Road. And the reason I brought you up here has little to do with anything specific to the area and everything to do with the name of the streets. You see, when Barton Salisbury started the settlement here, it was originally called Salisbury Mills, most likely because that was the name of the mill he built. Then in, oh, I want to say about 1848, they officially changed the name to Newark. But for whatever reason, that name didn't stick around for very long. Because in November of 1853, the County Board of Supervisors decided to change the name once again to, you guessed it, Barton in honor of Barton Salisbury. That name had more staying power 
as that is what the name remained until November of 1961 when the city of West Bend annexed the village of Barton into it. And basically that would become the end of Barton, at least to the outside world. Locals and anyone who grew up in the area or even old timers not from the area still consider this to be Barton. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, every year they put on something called Barton Days. Because, you know, here in Wisconsin, we can find a reason to party for just about anything. Barton Days was started several years ago by those in the community who wanted to keep the spirit of Barton alive. At a typical Barton Days celebration, you'll find music, classic cars, crafts, food, and even a polka mass. And speaking of parties, I'm standing here throwing my own little personal pity party because guess what happened? My lovely logging boots, ones that were made in the good old U.S. of A, decided to come apart at the seams right after Marty just got done gluing the other one back together that fell apart when I was filming my mountain video. And yeah, I know, that was so long ago. It just really wasn't that high on my priority list. And well, with winter coming and us still being here in Wisconsin and having left, having not left yet, it's kind of like, I need my boots. I don't know, I thought products made in the good old USA were supposed to last. But I guess you can't count on anything these days. <laughs> Broken boot or not, the show must go on. However, before we go any further, I have a couple of quick shout outs to give. First, I'd like to say welcome and give a special thanks out to Patrick for becoming our latest patron here on Patreon. Next, I'd like to give a special thanks out to Doug for his generosity in increasing his patronage. I'd also like to recognize and give a special shout out of thanks to all of you who've Hit the super thanks button here on YouTube. And last but not least, special thanks goes out to Vic from Brown Rock, Texas for tipping our trip jar. By the way, if you want to have some fun with your kids or your grandkids, have them say Round Rock 10 times real fast and see what happens. Anyways, I digress. Thanks to all of you for helping us get out to so many awesome places, both here in Wisconsin and across America. Can I just ask, what is an edible oil filter? Can somebody clue me in on that? I've never heard of that before. And just like magic, I'm back at the car. I got a funny story I wanna share with you here real quick before we move on to other parts of Barton. And that is, right after I posed that question, a young man came out and asked if I needed any help. And so I asked him, and guess what? He called somebody who explained to me what an edible oil filter is. How cool is that? And then we got to talking and I found out his first name is Alan, and he's gonna be starting his own YouTube journey here real soon. So Alan, if you're watching, I just wanna say, Thanks again for your help and good luck to you. Oh yeah, and before I forget, for those of you wondering what an edible oil filter is, it's probably not what you're thinking. It is definitely not something that people eat. Basically, it's a filter for cleaning cooking oil. Apparently, the gentleman who started that manufacturing facility invented the very first oil filter for cooking oil. That way, restaurants don't have to throw away their cooking oil after they use it one time, they can continue to recycle it and reuse it over time. Who would have thought that today I would learn so much about cooking oil here in Barton? Or that something like that would even have been invented here. It goes to show so many of the things that we take for granted that originate in some of the most unlikely places. Something else that kind of just blows my mind about Barton overall is that within what used to be the village of Barton exists an unincorporated community known as 
Young America. From what I understand, Young America was a brand of flour that used to be made here. And way back when, when Barton used to exist as its own separate town, apparently there was a village here known as Young America. Beyond that, I wasn't able to find out too much more about Young America, other than if you look it up on maps, it still exists as an unincorporated community within Barton, within the city of West Bend. So basically what we have here is a case of a forgotten village hidden within a forgotten town, all within the city of West Bend. Have I blown your mind yet? Interestingly enough, where Mauricio's now stands was the original location of a church that we're gonna go check out here in a moment. For those of you wondering, Barton's merger with West Bend was largely financially driven. By becoming a part of the much larger city, Barton could participate in school systems and municipal works already in place. Another fun fact about Barton that I believe I mentioned during my West Bend video is that a portion of it is considered a historic district and is on the National Register of Historic Places. And if I'm not mistaken, that includes St. Mary's Immaculate Conception Catholic Church, its rectory over on the corner of Jefferson and Monroe, and its school. Satisfied by the answers we found here, we set our sights on discovering the location of Young America, a lost Wisconsin village that's been long forgotten within Barton. I'll give you one guess as to where I am now. If you look, you can see the sign for the old mill. And actually, you can see it clearly on the front of the building, Sukow Milling Company. This is the forgotten, unincorporated community of Young America. Inside Barton, inside West Bend. Young America got its start in 1851, thanks to Morris Waite, who built a dam and a sawmill here. Soon, it became a thriving river community, with the addition of a flour mill, a barrel factory, a blacksmith, two general stores, a carpenter farm, a wagon factory, and a hotel named the American House. However, as fate would have it, the village would eventually become but a remnant of its former self after being bypassed by the railroad. How cool is this? And all thanks to the gentleman running the store that we popped in. If he hadn't given us directions, we probably would never have found it. There's only one way in to Young America. Oh, check out this old house. What a beauty. If it's not on the National Register of Historic Places, it should be. And then there's this one here too. What a rare treat to be able to discover all this history here. And there you have it, the story of Young America, a forgotten Wisconsin village now totally hidden inside the historic village of Barton, once its own separate town and now a part of the city of West Bend. <laughs>